Masterpieces are outstanding creations worthy of a place in history. They are the works of art we can't stop thinking and talking about. Art's meant to make a difference. These are pieces that continue to do so long after the artist is gone. I'm Lady K Flow. This is where I give you my quick takes on art pieces I call the masters. Approaching Storm by Eugène Boudin. Nature versus man whips like wind through the painting Approaching Storm. Eugène Boudin often painted the moneyed and middle class. Their fancy finery struck a wry contrast with Mother Nature. Critics of his day, 1864-ish, called Boudin's landscapes vulgar for painting the stylish people. But whimsy's also part of nature, human nature. There's a jovial tone at the base of this work. The approaching storm looms above for us, the viewer, to see, while the partiers below seem to not even notice the wind's uptick as their bonnet ribbons blow. Approaching storm portrays a faceless party, Frivolity rules the day. Without faces, the people seem all the more oblivious to the dark skies above. None of them even appear to look up. In fact, all but one face down. It's ironic because that's where the sun shines in this painting. A brilliant light pool floods its bottom right. This warmth and light captures the party's attention. Viewer attention begins with this sun patch too, but red dresses catch the eye like poppies in a field. Boudin uses fashionable folly to delay our gaze from the approaching storm. These overdressed partygoers can't hold our attention long though. As pretty as they seem, they're more a mass of pricey frocks than real people. The artist invited us to an elite party but he cast it with faceless characters. We can't help but raise our eyes to the burgeoning sky. It blooms with gray foreboding whirls. Seeing it reminds us that the party's filled with wind. It's a line of gaiety broken only by silken streamers lifted on the breeze. Eugène Boudin influenced the impressionists, most notably Monet, using details just like this. With a few blustery ribbons, this master painter invokes man versus nature. Of course, he sets a majestic tableau with a feisty sky and frivolous party, but silk tendrils are the true messengers here. Man versus nature. Boudin's ribbons sing to us of pretty festivities. They're the definition of extra. That's why we call them accessories. Mother Nature has no patience for such frippery. She's results driven, all business. That's how approaching storm glories in contrast. Flurries puff among the party people, barely noticed. Still, the sky tells nature's story. It warns of danger. How can they not see? But upon second glance at the party, we see that one of them does. The man in black lifts an arm to the clouds. He leans in to tell his friends. They don't seem to listen or see him. We didn't see him the first time around either. The only sign of the approaching storm was those silly ribbons. After all, we're human too. The shiny stuff gets our attention. That's how human nature differs from mother nature. She means business. 
we never even figure out what it all means. The man in black represents all the ignored science and data we dismiss along the way. Art often explores man versus nature. It's portrayed often as a battle, man fights world type stuff. Instead, Boudin's approaching storm articulates a rare but apt insight. It's not a fair fight between man and nature, not because mother nature wields such power, Rather, it's imbalanced because man prefers oblivion. We crave our escapes. A beach resort sets a splendid stage to show us this about ourselves. Aren't ribbons pretty? Sure, but they're about to get drenched and sand soaked too. Nature always wins. Approaching storm, FAQs. What is Ijean Boudin most known for? Boudin painted Approaching Storm in 1864. As a mid-1800s French landscape painter, he was the first to work outdoors. In particular, Ijean focused on marine landscape paintings. He painted all things sea-related. Where can I see Approaching Storm in person? Approaching Storm graces the permanent European Paintings exhibit at the Art Institute of Chicago. You can visit the museum at 111 South Michigan Avenue, Chicago, Illinois. It's only one block away from the interactive public artwork at Crown Fountain, so be sure to check that out too. Why was a Jean Boudin a marine painter, only portraying sea-related subjects? A Jean Boudin grew up on the bank of the Seine. His father worked as a harbor pilot. Even prepubescent A Jean worked on a steamboat that traveled the Seine. Though he gave up this seafaring work life as a teen, A Jean retained his love for the sea. What was A Jean Boudin's relationship with Claude Monet? 33-year-old Boudin met Monet in 1857, when he was only 18. The elder Eugen convinced Claude to set aside his caricatures and paint landscapes. He continued to mentor the younger painter, and they became lifelong friends. Monet paid tribute to the humble Boudin later in life. Masterpieces are written and recorded by Lady K-Flow. If you like this podcast and want to hear more like it, the greatest compliment you can give is to tell a friend. And subscribe to Lady K-Flow on Apple, Google, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Thanks. Visit LadyKFlo.com for all the goods. That's L-A-D-Y-K-F-L-O dot com.